After a massive scandal, Section 31 would be officially dismantled, only in reality to withdraw further into the shadows, requiring the organization to create several new classes of starships to further its goals. One of these classes, the Castella class, would make its own mark on this organization. But what do we know about this deceptive class? Well, today we'll find out. Hello and welcome to another episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon, a Star Trek web series that dives into the history of any given topic using Beta Canon sources and my own imagination to fill in the gaps. In today's episode, we're taking a look at the Castella class, a Section 31 variant design of the Great Excelsior class, to better understand its place in Star Trek history. Please note, the Castella class is a fan design, and so what I've done here is created a story which I think fits the design and beta canon history itself. Sometimes I just see a design and all the pieces fit into place for me, and the Castella class was one of these instances. But because this is just a bit of my own fan fiction, all information relayed should pretty much be taken with a grain of stardust, and only considered a little bit of Star Trek fun. And so, with all that out of the way, let's begin. Section 31, the name of an organization whispered in the darkest shadows. Created in Starfleet's early days, and then ratified during the United Federation of Planets' conception, Section 31 would be charged with the unofficial protection of the Federation. During the mid-23rd century, Section 31 would become an open secret, with most officers in Starfleet having some knowledge of its existence. The darkest aspect of Section 31 was that it was an autonomous department, operating with no oversight or accountability whatsoever, being free to kill those it deemed a threat to the Federation's interests at its own discretion. But in 2259 that would all change. Section 31's Threat Assessment System, simply known as Control, had been utilized for decades to assess potential threats and create recommended countermeasures and prevention methods for all those scenarios. After the Battle of the Binary Stars, operational control of Starfleet was turned over to this computer system, again with very little oversight and no real questioning of the system's output by those in charge. After a battle in 2259, Control would be dismantled and neutralized, with Starfleet Command subsequently destroying everything that remained of it as the entire situation had become a great scandal for the Federation. In response, the Federation Council would order Section 31 dismantled as well, and for all intents and purposes to the Federation's public and Starfleet's officers, it was. But of course, this was not true at all. Instead, Section 31 buried itself and continued to operate business as usual, with several operatives systematically deleting and destroying any evidence that it had even existed at all. Section 31, because it was not shackled by Starfleet or Federation regulations, had progressed about a century ahead technological-wise to that of the organizations it was claiming to protect. And now, with it firmly entrenched in the shadows, the need for its own starship classes, new and unknown, became clear. Several classes far more advanced than Starfleet's starships of the line were developed, and at the end of the 23rd century, with the success of the Excelsior class, Section 31 would make the decision to create its own variant on that class, and the Castella class would be born. Sitting at a length of 516 meters and 34 decks tall, the Castella class would be designed to be operated by only 300 officers and crew members, a drastic reduction to the 750 crew members needed to operate its parent class. Utilizing the old warp scale before it was changed in the early part of the 24th century, the Castella class would have a standard safe cruising speed of warp factor 9.5 and an emergency maximum speed of warp factor 15 for 12-hour increments, again a grand improvement over its Excelsior class parent. Tactically, the Castella class would contain 10 dual-phaser emitter banks, 
along with an additional six single emitter phaser banks. She would also contain four photon torpedo launchers. Shielding for this class would be greatly improved when compared to other Starfleet vessels of the time. To aid in gathering important intelligence for Section 31, the Castella class would include a large sensor array system attached above its impulse drive system. This array would allow the starship to remain light years away from its target while still gathering very detailed and accurate information on said target. Also, an improved comm and network data processor would be included within this array, which would constantly be retrieving data from all Starfleet starbases, outposts, colonies, and relays to provide an accurate, almost real-time depiction of all vessel positions within Federation space. This would allow the Castella class to remain undetected by Starfleet's best and brightest. Improved hollow emitters, located between the Starship's main hull panels and based on technology captured from the Romulan Star Empire back before the Federation's creation, would also be included in this design. This would allow the Castella class to appear as virtually any other Starship design it wished so long as detailed data on said design had been acquired. These hollow emitters would also have the ability to radiate the various Starship design energy signatures of those given classes it was appearing as, making it virtually indistinguishable from the original class. Again, a huge advantage for Section 31, this ability would afford the Castella class many unique opportunities, such as entering Klingon or Romulan space appearing as one of their own starship designs, and again staying hidden by Starfleet's prying sensor eyes. The Castella class would also include Section 31's latest developments in onboard hollow technology, hollow emitters included on every deck in every section of the interior of the starship would allow the Castella class to utilize the first holographic crew member programs ever created. Primitive by today's standards, these hollow crew members would contain no personality profile, but rather simply exist to augment the crew of a starship should the need arise. The Castella class was a huge success for Section 31, even though only 10 starships of the class would ever be constructed. Utilizing them to their absolute potential, many disasters would be averted for Starfleet and the Federation and the Castella class would continue to be upgraded and refit during its lifetime. A lifetime that would last well into the 25th century. And as probably the most amazing testament to this class's design would be the fact that it would never be discovered or uncovered by Starfleet, the Federation, or any of their allies or enemies. Only recently discovered to have existed after the reintegration of Section 31 into Starfleet Command. Created by a shadow organization to keep the peace for the Federation, the Castella class would become one of the most beloved designs of Section 31, proving the need for such starships even in the best and brightest organizations, and earning the secretive starship class its unknown place in Starfleet history. Thank you for watching today's episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon. What do you think of the Castella class and the historical narrative that I've created here? Do you want to see more videos about Section 31 and its Starship classes? Well, leave your comments in the section below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, hitting that little bell icon so you won't miss a single video we release. Want to help the channel operate from within the shadows? Then consider becoming a channel patron. The link to our Patreon account is in the description below. Thanks again for watching, live long, and prosper.